why these trials happen is in fact summarized even in the word fitna which is used in the Quran and Sunnah to describe these trials and tribulations. Fitna, we translate it as a test, as a trial, as a tribulation. But in reality, in pre-Islamic Arabic, in ancient Arabic, fatana did not mean trial. Fatana mean, meant to examine. Fatana meant to examine. And that is why the goldsmith in Arabic was called fatan. Because what does the goldsmith do? He examines gold to see whether it's real gold or whether it's fake gold. The goldsmith, you would go to him and you would get him to assess how many carrots, is it authentic, is it not. So he was called the fatan, the one who inflicts the fitna. And how does the goldsmith test the, the uh, veracity or the carrot of the gold? They would put it through a furnace. And that furnace was called fitna. Because the furnace tested the gold. The furnace tested the gold. And what happened after the test was what? What came out of it was pure raw gold. The purest of the pure. So even in the word fitna, we see a symbolism of the wisdom of why Allah tests us. The purpose of a fitna is to purify the righteous believers, to sift through and to make sure that our iman is as pure as that gold that comes out of the fitna or the furnace. Alif Lam Mim, a hasib an nasu an yutraku an yakulu amanna wahum la yuftanun. Did mankind think that they would be left without having been tested just by saying we believe? No. Allah says, وَلَقَدْ فَتَنَّ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ Allah has tested those before you. Why? What was the purpose of the test? فَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ صَدَقُوا وَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ الْكَاذِبِينَ The reason of the fitna, Allah will test who amongst you is true and who amongst you is a liar. True to what and lying to what? True in their claim that we are Muslims. True in their claim that we believe. And again, brothers and sisters, this goes back to a fundamental difference of our paradigm. We believe in Jannah. We believe in a world after this world. Even if we don't get full justice in this world, we believe in the justice of the next. Even if we don't enjoy this world, we believe in the enjoyment of the next. So the purpose of the fitna is to make us truly re-examine what are my priorities. Enjoyment of this world or enjoyment of the next? What are my priorities? To live this dunya and then to die? Or to live the never ending life of the akhirah? This is what the fitna does. It tests us. It makes us reevaluate and think. It sifts each and every one of us so that the filthy impurities, just like that gold that has the impurities, when it goes through the furnace, what happens to those impurities? It falls away. It leaves it. Then what comes out? Nothing but pure gold. This is what a fitna is supposed to do. And there are those who don't have any gold. They're nothing but impurities. So what will the fitna do? Crumble them up and destroy them. And astaghfirullah, this is exactly what we see. There is a whole industry here in America of these pseudo-Muslims or ex-Muslims. There's a whole industry of self-hating Muslims. People who will sell their religion so that they can get on the New York Times bestseller list. And that's very easy these days. Any Muslim who wants to criticize Islam, or an ex-Muslim who wants to criticize Islam, immediately the fame, the prominence, the money, the interviews, non-stop. And there are people, as we all know, they have made a lifestyle, they have made their income to criticize Islam. They were born into Muslim families, but they realized fame and fortune awaits me if I leave. Clearly they failed the fitna. And there are people that we see all the time. These are the standard pundits and the experts that are interviewed by the far right and Fox News and others. This is the reality. They have failed miserably. So we see those that have failed. Inshallah, we also see those that are remaining firm. Alhamdulillah, how many of us here in this masjid, when we came to this land, our iman was not that strong. But being surrounded by all types of fitna, 
major and minor, fitna of a social level and fitna of a personal level, what happens? Many of us, we rediscovered our Islam. Many of us, our faith became more committed. Perhaps we weren't that involved with the masjid. Lo and behold, we realize, I want to be a part of the masjid. Perhaps we weren't that concerned about our salah. Lo and behold, we realize, I need to start praying regularly. And alhamdulillah, that's a positive sign that the fitna has affected us in a manner that it should. That's exactly what the fitna should do. That we come out of it pure than when we came into it.